My dad was a plumber, and I didn't recognize he was an entrepreneur until actually many years after I was in the workforce. When I was very young and I, and I looked at my father's company, there was an admiration I had. They owned something. Entrepreneurship was about creating a livelihood for yourself and your family, period. I had a very bumpy high school. I stopped counting at 300 Grateful Dead concerts. <laughs> and I failed Algebra II four semesters in a row. I was right at the bottom of my class when I graduated. Actually, I was accepted uh, to, to the Plumbers Union and Dean Junior College on the same day. And my father said, you can always be a plumber. You know how to do that. Why don't you try that college thing? I've been at Accenture for 34 years. If you look inside the corporate world, corporations are nothing more than a collection of sole proprietors and small businesses flying in formation. I mean, some of the world's greatest companies are because they're a collection of initiators and innovators and risk takers and good business runners that have invented things that fundamentally change how the world works and lives. And I think there's entrepreneurial opportunities in everything we do out there. I've had 28 jobs, but they all happen to be within the same company. My dad was absolutely my role model. You know, they don't make people like my dad anymore. He was the one who, when I was young, said, practice leadership. Go for it. Why not? What do you have to lose? I have always been obsessed with shoes. My first job coming out of business school ended up being at an athletic company, Reebok. My obsession went to like a, like a crazy level. I actually had already started working on my own collection. Then all of a sudden I started getting calls from Tommy Hilfiger. And I'll never forget one night I was talking to my husband and he said, well, let me ask you a question. Is your next job going to be the president of Tommy Hilfiger or would you rather be Tommy Hilfiger? And I said, Tommy Hilfiger, and he said, well, you better get busy. I had a vision. I always loved sports, but on the other hand, I loved fashion. I loved looking glam. I loved looking hot. I'd go to buy fashion shoes, and they were, they were too boring for me. Why can't I get the sizzle and the colors and the fun of my, you know, my athletic shoe and combine it with my dress shoe? Just imagine if a Manolo Blahnik and a Nike had a baby, what would it look like? So I made the first collection, now what? <laughs> I used to take a bag of shoes, I would find a way to get it to Jeffrey, New York. I befriended the sales guys. I was not taking no for an answer. I really want the brand to be an option for girls. You know, I represent girl power and feeling good about yourself and feeling gorgeous. I'm really excited about who wears my shoes, like Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Lady Gaga. Just pick up Us Weekly or People. There's a good chance my shoes are in there. My dad was in the board and restaurant business. I was about 10 or 11 years old and my dad said, uh, okay, you're going to come clean the bar and restaurant. And I finished it. My dad gave me a couple of bucks and it was my birthday and I kind of had a pouty look on my face. And he went, uh, what's wrong? And I says, well, uh, it's my birthday. I thought you brought me down to give me a little present or something. And he says, uh, I gave you a job for your birthday. And I remember thinking, lucky me. <laughs> I learned about doing things that had to get done, uh, attention to detail. A lot of things I, uh, most kids my age didn't learn. And for the longest time, my mother thought that was going to be my vocation. I was going to go into priesthood. I decided to put that on hold for a while. One of the ROTC guys came up and said, hey, uh, you look like you could pass a physical fitness test. A year later, they offered me a scholarship. Let me try this joint for a couple of years. And then I was given command of two different companies. I was sent from Washington, D.C. to uh, the Army Materiel Command's operation in Rock Island, Illinois. And then 9-11 happened. And this contingency command I had had to flex and adapt itself 
from being a contingency command to now being an operational command. When we were executing Operation Iraqi Freedom, it was an equipment shortage. They didn't have trucks, they didn't have the right kind of trucks, they didn't have the Kevlars, didn't have vests, didn't have ammunition, because nobody figured we were going to fight a war there again. Then we got to the fight, Saddam Hussein left the field very quickly. In three weeks, we were up in Baghdad. So now you've got a couple hundred thousand pissed off guys with weapons walking around. So now our tanks are going down the street and these insurgents are throwing grenades and setting IEDs off. So we had to go from going in, fighting the fight and leaving, to going in, fighting the fight, setting a stance and building up a government that there had not been one there. And uh, it's two very different sets of skills you bring to the table. We had to learn an awful lot of lessons and some of them we had to learn the hard way. My mother still to this day goes to daily mass. Her girlfriends say the rosary. They have had a rosary every day I've been deployed. And they would not stop saying the rosary until I came home to say the rosary with them. The first paying job I had was actually as a detasseler. I had to get out at uh, a ridiculous time of day, I don't know if it was three, four, something like that, to pull tassels off the tops of corn. It was a way to get a check in your pocket at a really young age. My first occupation was as a professional football player, and coming out of a small school at the University of South Dakota, you really have to find your way into the league. They're not going to find you. You have to learn how to sell yourself. I think that's something as an entrepreneur you're constantly doing. They give you a swing, and I think you go in and you, you prove yourself. In a matter of days, I'm covering Marshall Falk one-on-one, -on -one, you know, not pooping my pants, which is a good thing. I actually played one season late in my career with the New York Jets with a badly mangled foot. And I played all 16 games on the thing. I really had to gut it out. There are some things that seem daunting that you can overcome, and there's some value to prove that you can get through it. Our business is called Skycrapers, and our intention is to, to really do a fast surf model with crepes. You know, my wife and I are sort of exploratory food type people. We like to go and try new things and, and sort of play scientists in our kitchen. And we always thought, you know, we take a look at the market and say, what's not out there? So we had the idea for crepes. Crepes have a reputation of foo-foo, and I think that's something we're setting out to destroy. We opened our first store in June of 2011. I'll know in three or four months if we like what we're doing. And if we do, we're gonna launch as many as four more within the next 18 months. I've been through 10 NFL training camps. We know that sort of roll up your sleeve mentality when it's really hard and it's really rough, but you know there's something on the other end of the tunnel. So I think that mentality is ingrained in us. My entrepreneurial spirit definitely was born with my grandparents. My grandparents founded Brookstone. Grandpierre and Granny were you know, putting together catalogs, pasting brochures, uh, bringing the tools together to be sold in this catalog business. When we started Preserve, there were very few companies sourcing recycled materials. And we started the company in, in essence to reuse Earth's resources. I'm uh, someone who is utilitarian, finish uh, the entire uh, meal on your plate and don't get it down from the table until you're done with it. I learned my New England resourcefulness from my family. You appreciate everything you have and you use it as thoroughly as you can before something's wasted. The most popular preserved product is definitely the preserved toothbrush. It's, uh, it's iconic, it's been around since the start. It was our first product. I would like Preserve to be a, a global brand, a global consumer products company. My name is Bill Green. Ruthie Davis. Matt Chattel. Vincent Bowles. Eric Caldwell Hudson. I'm the chairman of Accenture. Rad Design Inc. Our business is called Skycrapers. I'm the president of Vincent E. Bowles Incorporated. Founder and CEO of Preserve. <laughs>